Hey, welcome in everybody to this edition of Jeff Pack to the Bank as we wrap up a Phillies five to four win over those New York Yankees. Uh, we of course beat the Yankees five to four on the back of four good innings by Zach Eflin, and then our bullpen actually remembered how to pitch if your name was not Nick Pavetta this tonight. So that was a very good thing to have. So, Andrew, how you doing tonight? And also. Uh, what do you think of the fact that other than Nick Pavetta, the bullpen looked good to start? Hey, we got a Phillies victory. That's what matters. We split the series. Should have had three in the series. Came out with two. At least you split. You didn't lose it. I'm doing well. Um, you know, we, we promised you guys a show. Here it is. We said it might be a little late. It's a little late. But you know what? Late's better than nothing. Here we are. Get to recap a Phillies victory rather than a Phillies loss. So you really can't ask for anything better than that. Um, yeah. To answer your question about the bullpen, hey, Eflin gave it four fantastic innings. He was on a pitch limit, uh, limit, not yeah, pitch limit, uh, because of not having the right workouts, not throwing more than sixty in any of the uh, simulated games or any of that. He didn't even actually get to throw in a simulated game, or uh, sorry, he threw in a simulated game. He didn't get to throw in any of the exhibition games or anything or the um, inter squad uh, scrimmages. He threw in a simulated game after those were ended. Um, so he was on a, a pitch limit. He actually exceeded that limit by 15 pitches. So very good sign there. And he still gave up zero under or zero earned runs. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, your bullpen comes in, you get five innings of work from him. Hey, we all know if you're going to get five innings from this bullpen, runs are going to come out at some point. I mean, it, it's just, you know, it at this point, like you got to get through that fifth, sixth stretch. Cause then once you get to the seventh, eighth, ninth, you can, picking different things, and obviously we all like Alvarez, Nair, and Naris. They got the job done with their guys, but Nick Pavetta is Nick Pavetta. I mean, hey, we hope he can turn into a better pitcher, and he, he's got the pitches. It's just, I mean, you listen to Larry Anderson, or you listen to Ricky Bo, both those guys, they talk about all the time. It's clearly confidence with those, like with him and Vince Velasquez. They, for whatever reason, they just don't trust their pitches at times, and it came back to bite him again in this game, and We'll we'll see what, when it bounces back. I mean, he left the pitch up there to Gary Sanchez, who's been struggling all season. It was his first home run of the uh, season for him, and uh, that's what happens. But hey, you had you had runs to give up. I guess is the way to look at it. You gave up just a few, and you still won. Yeah. Now uh, we're going to start on the back of a guy that needs to be, as Biscuit always says, in chasing the pennant, signed back. Uh, where JT Real Muto started us off in the bottom of the third with a home run that scored Reese and Bryce. What do you think of how good JT's doing in this short season so far, especially seeming like he popped right back and looked perfectly fine after being off for a week? I mean, JT, I mean, we know it. He's the best catcher in baseball. Go out and sign him. I mean, at this point, I don't know why he's not signed even – in the back end of that contract, even if his knees start to buckle up and kind of wear on him, you DH him because his offense won't take a dip at all. Um, but, yeah, no, Hoskins got the job done. He walks. Harper follows with a single. JT, he gets a nice pitch, and he doesn't miss it. And he, he that's the thing about JT. He doesn't miss those. And, I mean, he gets two hits on the night, brings his average up uh, again. I think it's 330 around there. I mean, all this guy, all this guy does is hit. I mean – this guy just goes out, plays every day. Obviously, if he would, he probably would play both doubleheader games. Obviously, you're not going to allow him to as a manager. No. But we all know if he was allowed to, he would definitely do it. Um, this guy's just an animal. And he'll go out and fight for his teammates. He'll go out and fight for himself. And, and he knows what he's up against. He's up against the contract. And it, it's funny. I mean, all we hear in all, all season is, uh, I mean, all how good th- this Yankees offense is and all that. I mean, you, you compare some of these numbers. <laughs> Aaron Judge has played in what now? Double-digit amount of games. JT's probably played in what, six games? JT's only what, I think two, maybe three home runs. I think it's three home runs now behind Aaron Judge. He's right there. It's not even, and he's played in like three or four less games. So, I mean, I, I think a lot more people need to start talking about how good of a start this guy's having. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. When you have a week off and you come back and don't seem like you miss a beat, that's another thing. There's also another guy on this team. Well, there's actually two, but we'll get to the other guy last. But there's another guy in this game that made a factor 
that have come back and acted like they haven't missed a beat. And one of those is Phil the Goose's loose Gosling. So, you know, <laughs> uh, he had another double. This dude just seems like he's going to be the National League version of Kyle Seager, but a much better average hitter because just ripping doubles for days. And he scored Bryce Harper and JT on that. So, and that was in the bottom of the third. So, He's a guy that ripped that. I thought that had a chance to be gone at first because it was going into that alley well that like goes deeper in CBP. And I was like, darn, if he hit that a little bit over. But <laughs> still, it was a nice double and we got the runs. So it's nice to still seeing Phil do what he's doing. What do you think of how impressive this guy's been early in a local area native from Malvern Prep? Uh, it's always cool when you get the local guys. I mean, good to see him kind of come out here, represent, and obviously doing all that. And good for him. I mean, what better story? You get an underdog kind of here. No one really expected him to make the team coming into camp. I mean, you could say whatever you want about maybe the layoff helped him and it hurt some other guys. But you know what? Everyone had the same thing. They went out, started spring training, had the layoff, came back at summer camp, and he showed up. He got the job done. Obviously, I, I wasn't as high on him as, as you were coming into the year. Um and he's proven. I mean, I, I don't. I never said he was a terrible player. I never had faith in him. I mean, I don't. I wasn't expecting him to do this. So, I mean, he's proven me wrong. Um, the, all this guy's doing is hitting the ball, but for some reason he can't buy buy a full game. And that's why I'm trying to figure out. I mean, I'm sitting here. I mean, you're sitting there. You're watching him hit the ball every time. I mean, two home runs that first game against the Marlins, yeah. and he. I mean, all this guy does is hit. He had a double yesterday, uh, had a double today, but they keep pitch hitting for him. I'm like, what are you, like, what are you doing? If like, I, I, I'm trying to figure that out. Like, Phil Gosling comes up and in the um, third inning gets gets the two RBI double, and then he comes up in, in the fifth, and you're pitching with Jay Bruce. And trust me, I got nothing against Bruce. He's got all the power in the world, and I like him. But you're pitch hitting for your best hitter, arguably, right now. Obviously. Obviously, Bryce Harper is the best hitter. I'm not going to say he's better than Harper, but statistically, right now, he's the hotter hitter, and you're pinch hitting for him. And it just to me, it doesn't make sense. And, yeah. I, and I don't know what this guy has to do to play a full game. Um, well, and then to go tomorrow, off of that though, I was just going to say it could be fielding, but at the same argument, nobody can, like you say in today's game. Well, one, there's the DH, and he well, let's say he so didn't today. take about, but the <laughs> game he fielded, he made a nice catch where he ran back and made a catch, like one of those ones that you kind of catch it like this as you're coming over your shoulder behind because it was on the ship, so he was over a bit. And, I mean, even if his fielding's a bit off, if you're raking that much, Gene Segura's not fielding too well. He's not looking good at all as a whole. At least Scott Kingery still looks like he's worth a damn in the field. I mean, Gene Segura looks like you might as well not put him on the baseball field. So... Yeah. Well, and here's my yeah. thing, like... Tomorrow's a righty. I bet you Gosselin's not in the lineup. I mean, obviously, I hope I'm wrong. But they'll, they'll go back. They gave Segura the day off today, so they'll go back to Segura at third. We know Kingery will be at second. Gregorius will be at short. And then, since it's a righty, you'll DH Bruce. Yeah. So, like, this guy who just continues to hit, he's probably never going to play tomorrow. And tomorrow you need, I mean, I'm not going to call it a must-win because you got four games of them. But in a game where where the pitching, obviously, with, I mean, we'll get into that, but with Vince, you're going to need all the hitting in the world. And, at least it's a righty, so you'll get Hazley back in there probably for Quinn. And again, nothing. You know, I like Quinn, and he had a good game today. He got a triple and then a walk. Uh, fortunately, he was picked off. That was that was bad. He got caught leaning to his right side. But um, but again, nothing against Quinn. But Hazley's Hazley's like Gosselin. He's hitting the cover off the ball, and he can't buy playing time either. It's like, what do these guys got to do to get all the time? I get the time. No, uh, and with how Kutch looked today. That might have changed, but before um, today, we were even thinking he might have been a guy you wanted to keep at the leadoff spot, but Kutch looks so good today. Now, Hazy's a guy I would debate putting at two, and then having, because Gene's not hitting at two with how bad he's looked, there's no chance in hell I'm hitting him at two. Um, unless if you're putting JT up to two, you could potentially just have two people that are good at hitting the ball and poking it to different parts of the field. Like they kind of hit where the pitch is thrown in McCutcheon and Hazley when they're going their best. So you could have a lefty and a righty start well, a righty and a lefty in that case, start your lineup like that. I would not mind that at all because one's also pretty fast in Hazley 
And then if Quinn got going, you could just put Quinn in that same spot whenever he platooned with Hayes. So I don't know. Yeah. What tomorrow's lineups can be interesting. I'm interested to see tomorrow's. Um, if you're asking me personally, I, I want to see Hazel and Goslin in there. Um, two guys, I, I really, th- I mean, they're two of your Who hottest. Who are you taking out for Goose? I'm just wondering, would you take out Kingery because he did bad again tonight? With uh, I, I, I'm DH and Goose. Okay, I was just wondering if you wanted to take. Uh, I got, out I got uh, Vince on the mound, JT behind the plate, Hoskins at first, Kingery second, Gregorius short, um, Segura third, McCutcheon left, Hazley center. And uh, Harper and Wright with Goslin at DH, gotcha. See, or think, or if you don't like the defense, throw Goslin in one of the one of the infield spots and let maybe you let Segura or Kinger get off their the defensive end and just worry about offense. Maybe you play Goslin in the infield, but um, no, he, I'm not ready. We're seven games in. I know some people, uh, I mean, reading stuff on Twitter, people are ready to jump off on some of these guys, but it's too early for me. You're only seven games in. You had a week layoff. Again, I saw some good swings today. Um, Hoskins, especially, I really liked what I saw from him from the plate. Um, struck out looking on a borderline pitch here and there. He would definitely wasn't happy. You're going to hear the Phillies bullpen yell or bullpen. The Phillies dug out yelling. They weren't happy with it. Um, McCutcheon gets two hits, should have had three, hit a line, screaming line drive right at, uh, Torres at short. So good, good, very good swings from the top half of the or top two in your lineup there. Um, again, I, I'm still. I want to see Hoskins drop back down to four. Hoskins four. Real Muto. Real Muto five. Hazley McCutcheon one two. Harper three. That's where I'd put the lineup. But we'll see. Yeah. I, I'm sure Hoskins is going to stay at two. But no, uh, I think it'll probably stay like that for now. Personally, since you rested Segura already, I don't see why you don't rest Kingery because if you're giving Segura rest to also potentially clear his head, Kingery hasn't looked good since coming back you should give him a day to a game to clear his head and in, in my opinion you should give him a game off you shouldn't dh him because he's struggling at hitting too i don't know if that'll work so i think you should just give him a day off where they say to reset your mind and stuff and then i would go there i don't you don't even have to put goose in if you don't want to do that at the second base position because you could dh goose and just throw neil walker at second base against a right-hander. So you could also do that. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't – I'm not high on Neil Walker right now. I, he had a double yesterday, but to me he's not deserving a, that start yet. I, just let these guys continue to get at bats. Um, I, I'm not benching King Greer Sigour tomorrow, if you're asking me. Um, there will be other times to bench him. Um Again, I, I think if you, you put Hazley and Goslin back in there to your hottest hitters, you move Kingery Segura kind of 8 9 spot, I think you'll see a fine offense tomorrow. And I think if you move them down there, they might get overlooked a little bit and they may, might see a couple better pitches, um, face a couple better pitches and get going. Uh, but you don't want to give up on some of these guys yet. Uh, but yeah, that, that's where I'm at. That's true. But uh, we're wrapping up talking about how good we brought it up a little bit earlier but how good in his first start back with four hits five k's efflin and four innings looked and then deal was square finally pitched a good in so <laughs> that, that was nice um he didn't give up any runs nick pavetta gave up two alvarez should be able to pitch tomorrow because he only pitched seven pitches but you know um and then hector nearest pitched 27 yeah 27 pitches so, what did you think of our bullpen today, other than Nick Pavetta, who we already compliment, comp, or not complimented, commented on, and more condemned than complimented earlier? I, I thought our bullpen looked uh, – first, I'll, I'll start with that. He, he, he was very good. Five Ks, four innings. Should have gave up zero if Kingery would have catch the ball. Um, he dropped one at second, extended the inning. Um, Nick Pavetta struggled, left his pitch up. Again, Sanchez hit it out um, pretty clearly, too. That that ball was gone. Everyone realized that from the swing of the bat. Um, Guerrero, he, he came in. He he, he faced. Uh, he, he did well. I, I like what I saw from him overall. I'm not gonna come out and say he's fine overall. I mean, we all know his struggles. Everyone has a good game here and there. I need to see consistency from him. Um, Jose Alvarez is he's a guy you trust before the season. I mean, we I mean we we went through the bullpen. You trust Alvarez, Morgan. 
Hunter. Uh, we'll, we'll still leave him in there. We'll, we'll, well, again, consistency is big, so he'll take another bad outing or so before he gets off that. And then obviously Nairs. You have Alvarez come in, shut the door down to uh, – or got two outs, gave up a hit as well. And then Nares came in, got the four out save. 27 pitches. So you figure if he can't go pitch one, throw one pitch and then pitch again. 27 pitches. He's probably unavailable tomorrow, but he got the job done tonight, which is what matters. Uh, again, four out save for him. Uh, I forget what they said, how many that is for him now, more than an inning save. But yeah, good for him. I've always been a Nares fan. I hope he continues to do well. I will say I've always liked him better at setup, and if you get like a traditional true closer in here, I mean, it just elevates Naris' game that much more. But I, I got faith in Naris getting the job done. The, the big question is, can we get to Naris? Um, yeah, but again, really good game tonight. I was happy with it overall. Very good swings, pitching outside of Pavetta. I mean, two innings. He did throw two. He gave up zero in the first inning, which was good. Just that sec- second extra inning. And, and listen, we like to see Pavetta kind of forced the two or three innings because he had that starting rule. He's transitioning to the bullpen, so maybe maybe you don't give him two innings. Maybe you give him one, build from that, and then um, as he gets comfortable with that one inning, then you build that second inning. Eventually he'll get there. If he continues to just put up zeros in that first inning, maybe you try that. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But very good game overall. Uh, this is one of the best, better games this season. I really think so. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I, I think everyone's seen, you got guys that you want to lock in, start to lock in that are not Nick Pavetta. Um, <laughs> so the, I mean, the Phillies just need guys to get going where I think our wrap for tonight's would be, we have similarly to Nick Pavetta somebody going tomorrow that also makes us want to pound our heads into a wall sometimes. Uh, and Vince, other than when he was in the outfield and we were at that game a little bit over a year ago, uh, Vince Velasquez going up against Kyle Wright, who we better hit because he has a, about as nine ERA in his career so far. Um, but what do you think of Vince Velasquez tomorrow going up against this Braves lineup with what you brought up before this podcast in Acuna, who hasn't even done anything yet and got fully going yet, is going to really. If the, if the Phillies want, if the Phillies want to win this game, your offense has to put up eight, 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 probably eight or nine runs. I mean, let's be real. Braves are a good hitting team. They're going to come into the CBP tomorrow night and they'll be ready to hit. Acuna struggled. He is a career three sixty four hitter offense. Uh, Freddie Freeman's a 333 hitter. Marcelo Zuna, surprisingly, Zuna's the only one that has a home run offense. Um, but he's another good hitter off him, and another good hitter in the lineup. Marquecas is batting over 400. He had his first start tonight um, against the Blue Jays. Uh, you're you're in you're in for if you like an offensive battle. I really think you can get that tomorrow. Like I I really think so. Again, I want to see Vince to do well, but we both know probably not going to happen. And then we all know we'll turn it to the bullpen, and we know what happens when we turn it to the bullpen. Think about it. You use Nick Pavetta tonight as your long man. You know what that means tomorrow? Vince can only go three or four innings. You're going to be looking at a Cole Irvin or Austin Davis coming in to try to get two or three innings in. I mean, I mean, come on. We we know how that always turns out. So you're looking at you're going to get probably about four from Vince. Then you're going to have to go two, maybe two innings from Cole Irvin or Austin Davis. So now you're looking at the sixth inning. Then the seventh, you're going to be looking at Morgan, maybe or no, because you used Alvarez and Naris, so they're going to be unavailable tomorrow. So you got to save Morgan and Hunter for the eighth, ninth. You're we're in for a treat. There. I don't want to call it a treat. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to mean. We're in for a game tomorrow, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to put up. If uh, unfortunately, I'm going to say I'll give you my preview series. I'll go for two for two. We'll win two, lose two. Tomorrow I'm going to predict. I'll predict a ten-seven loss tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I, I see. We'll go four innings, four innings from Vince, three runs. No, no, no. We'll go four innings, four runs, uh, three strikeouts. Um, probably about eighty pitches. That seems about right. Yeah. Um, I, I just think his numbers against the Braves have never been good. Um, I don't see why tomorrow's going to change. Freddie Freeman's doing well. I mean, luckily Albius is um out on the IL, but. Uh, I'm blanking on who played tonight, but I don't think he's that bad, honestly. 
Um, so, I, I mean, Braves are going to come in here hit the ball. They put Austin Riley at second. No, nah, it wasn't Riley. I'd recognize it. I forget. They they began with an H or an A. Um, but again, it's going to be a tough night for the, uh, both teams pitching wise. Um, you know the weather up there better than I do right now, but I'm sure it's kind of warm in August. Uh, so ball is going to be traveling. Hey, Phillies are averaging five runs a game. I mean, a, a, as much as we've complained about the offense, if you're averaging five runs a game, you're going to win most of those games if you have the pitching. So, if imagine if this, if this team can start hitting the ball, this or, sorry, if guys like Kingery and Segura can get with the other guys and start hitting the ball, this team's gonna be a pretty good offense. And I said it, this team, this offense can go up against a lot of offense in MLB. No, they uh, certainly they certainly can offense wise. Offense has never been much of the question with people, especially when you're still scoring five runs a game when some guys can't seem to hit a beach ball at the current moment um so that's helpful because when guys that you expect to hit start hitting you're probably going to have that number even more better when it already looks good so that's very helpful really our issue has not been that it's been like you said we gave vince a four spot and then he forgot how to pitch so you yeah you probably have to score about eight runs against a good offense because it's not other than this season they're being full when you're pretty good the marlins have a solid lineup, but they're not supposed to have the best team. Um, where that Vince Velasquez made the Marlins look like they were the Dodgers all of a sudden when we were up, and then they just started coming back. Where you could probably give this guy a six spot, like a game I was at in the past with Joe Bland, and still be like, "No, nah, I think we need to score two or three more runs." Actually, like <laughs> I think we should score yeah. a couple more runs. Uh, because I, that game ended up being a loss for people that don't remember that. Antonio Bristardo gave up a grand slam. Great name to remember there. Um, another great I, I'd rather him back now than <laughs> Davis and Irvin, that's for sure. No, I would rather go to Davis out of those two you mentioned than Irvin, though, because Irvin has no movement on his pitches. At least Austin Davis has some movement on his no, pitches. I'm saying I'd rather Antonio Bristardo. That's true, except for I feel like a 17-year-old has better control. You know who we really should have re-signed this offseason? Jake Deacon. Yeah, he was in the free agency. That could have made sense. Hey, we should have re-signed Jake Deakman. He'd be better than Irvin. He'd be better than Davis. He'd be... That's all right. Really. Yeah, I think he'd be better than Morgan, but I understand Morgan. Alvarez is better than Deakman. Um, But, you know what? At this point, I don't even care because he'd be better than any of the righties we have in there as well. So... And Deeks isn't a guy that goes out just to get uh, lefties. He's never been a guy that they just sent out on the team hey. been on only to get lefties. They use him in different situations at times as well. So, yeah, he would have been a guy I was also – I think we might have even talked about him on an offseason podcast. As a I'm sure I'm sure we yeah. have. We, we didn't Cause, miss anybody. Because he's a guy that made sense. But um, we need to see guys come in. You need to see, like I said – Young kids maybe start stepping up. Um, he only put him in one game and he got shellacked. But obviously, Dio is rare other than tonight looks crappy. So you probably should give Russo a shot again at a, some point. I'll get shot. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, so that's a guy that maybe you would put in for a couple innings over, try to get him through two if you can. Oh over a lefty, because you really ideally don't want to put a lefty that doesn't locate well against Marcel Ozuna and potentially Ronald Acuna, where if Russo can actually be filthy with his pitches or just kind of blow it, like use his stuff to get it past people, I like that prospects a little bit better than Cole Irvin going up against Ronald Acuna. Um more so or zoom Hopefully, if you're righty. making a pitching change for Acuna, it'd be a righty. But. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to put, like, I don't want to take Vince out and then put in just because they're a long man, Cole Urban, when it's going to be <laughs> a bunch of righties next inning, and then we'll be down 16 to 4 by yeah. the end of the inning. Um, but I don't know if you had, I think we about covered everything for tonight. I don't know if you had any wrap-up thoughts as we're hitting the 25-minute mark here for today's games or going into the Braves series. No, I just say hopefully you build from this tonight's game. Because, again, offense, yeah, five runs look pretty good. Um, 
again, obviously, guys struggled and the Kingrys and Sigourney didn't play. But you want to see Kingery get going. I think uh, this, this weekend might be it. Uh, my, my, my guys to watch for tomorrow, I'd say Andrew McCutcheon. Again, I really liked his swing uh, tonight, two hits um, and a line drive. That really looked like he, he could have got that one. Um, again, you mentioned it, a pitcher you should be able to hit. Uh, I'm going to sit here and predict. I'm going to go McCutcheon goes three for five tomorrow night. Um, he'll get what? I don't think he has one yet. He'll get his first home run of the season yeah, tomorrow night. Um we all know he's come back from the injury. It was going to take him a few games. I think tonight was his best game of the night. I really think uh, McCutcheon gets it done tomorrow. Again, unfortunately, I don't know if we'll be able to sustain that because the Braves got Braves got a better bullpen. So once we go to the bullpen, they'll they'll ride it. So they'll ride their bullpen. Uh, so unfortunately, I, I, I'll uh, I'm going to go. Of the league is a bullpen. You're right. Unfortunately, yeah, I'll go 10-7. Braves win. Um, but it's going to be a battle. I think offense shows up. I just don't have enough faith in the bullpen to give us that yeah. victory. Um, the, the Marlins just ha- signed random people in our bullpen, and they have one of the best statistical bullpens. When they Listen, just, nobody, they nobody, under, nobody understands what's going on in Miami. No one understands <laughs> how they went through that scoreless streak, how they continue to find ways to win. I think they ended up pulling out tonight's game. They were in a battle against Baltimore. Um, but that team, I, I mean – Six and one. I don't think anyone would have predicted that. Not even Miami fans. But I hope everyone enjoys a Friday night. Hopefully, Phillies baseball proves me wrong. We get a great outing from Vince, or just a great outing from the bullpen. Uh, but yeah, if you like high-scoring baseball games, turn on the Phillies tomorrow. But of course, now that I said that, it'll probably be like a <laughs> a zero-zero, one-nothing game. <laughs> game. But no, all seriousness, turn it on because both pitchers get hit pretty good usually. So. If you like watching offensive games, turn it on. Enjoy your Friday night. Stay safe. And uh, we might be back tomorrow, hopefully. We're we're really trying to give you as many as possible. Um, But if not, at least it's probably a preview for Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do something for the next day. But, yeah, tomorrow should on paper be a scoring game. But, again, when the Phillies go up against pitchers that have a 75,000 ERA, normally (laughs) that's the guys we don't hit. And then Clayton Kershaw comes into town, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, boys, seven runs today. And you're just like, what the hell? Um, So the Phillies are a team that makes zero sense, and uh, that'll probably continue until we balance everything out. Or Spencer Howard comes up, who's just great and just saves us and gives us a third great starter. Uh, So, you know, savior, along with Alec Bone. But... This has been a great show, and this has been a great night. We had a good game. We won 5-4. The bullpen, that is not Nick Pavetta, did very well. So this has been the Jetpacks to the Bank postgame segment. Have a great and pleasant Friday into your Saturday now, everybody, and enjoy the games tonight and enjoy all the sports you get to watch with all-day, everyday sports going on right now. Have a great and safe night. Peace out. For Andrew, I am Joe. Peace out, everybody. Go Phillies.